Chapter 12, Crasher Party. Hopefully you're all having a good day. You and Drew stare at the bathroom door in horror as Edwin bangs on it from the other side. We should just go out there, right? I mean, for all he knows, we were just talking. It's not what we did, but what it looks like, and trust me, it doesn't look good for either of us. This time you can't escape. I've got you both dead to rights. Now come out of there. If we're damned either way... And I'm going to town send myself. There's no way I'm going down for something or someone I didn't do. I may have been the one going down, but you definitely did do me, baby bird. Off campus doesn't count. It's not like no man's land. When we get out of here, I doubt Townsend will see it that way. Well, Edwin's right about one thing. There's no way we're getting out of here without Pat going past him. We're screwed. Until he sees us in here together with his uh, own two eyes, he's got nothing. And he knows it. We just need to think. There's got to be some way we can salvage this. Like, he can't hear the two of you talking. You pull the blinds up and open the window, peeking out. The ground floor patio's empty, and you could probably make it down there. What if I climbed out the window? I could pretend I was on the patio while Edwin was raving about us being in here. It would clear both of our names, not to mention make Edwin look stupid. I got five bucks on illusion on choice! You get a boost from Drew and heave yourself first onto the windowsill, and then the roof. Whoa, this looks higher than I thought. Drew leans out the window and surveys the ground below. Yeah, don't look down, just focus on following the roof around the backyard and climbing down the trellis. Then you'll come back into the house, make a big show of asking what's going on, and boom, no more Edwin. Backyard trellis be seen coming in, that sounds easy enough. Hang on, how do you know the exact route of this back bathroom? Open this door now, or I'm breaking it down! I'd like to see your scrawny ass try. It's a story that involves too much whiskey, an unexpected parent visit, and way more time than we have right now. Hmm, well, when this is over... You owe me a story time. I'm talking from start to finish. Deal. Then I guess I'll see you on the other side. Boo closes the window and drops the blinds, shading you from view. Seconds later, you hear Edwin's voice. Where's Anissa? You shuffle away from the window before you can hear the answer, concentrating on putting one foot in front of the other. Okay, Anissa, you're only walking along a slanted roof two stories high above the ground in the middle of the night. What could possibly go wrong? As if on answer, a woman bursts into the empty backyard, a man trailing behind her. Babe, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. You know I always, uh, I'm always up for having fun, but sometimes you take these parties way too seriously. Too seriously? Just because I special ordered my toga and demand to be treated like a royalty? Yes? You freeze, quickly ducking down to minimize your presence. If they look up, I'm toast. I need something or somewhere to hide. Scanning the side of the house, you notice two windows and peer into the first one. We have to be fast. My girlfriend's downstairs. Yikes. I don't think I'm supposed to see this. Uh, maybe this means they'll be caught up in each other, so I can slip right by. You inch your way to the next window and find another bedroom. Empty this time. Light creeps out from under the attached bathroom door. I could sneak through there. Just hope whoever's inside is gonna be in there for long enough. But things could go badly if they're not. Go in the room with the cobble, go in the empty room. Jackpot, now just gotta get in and out. You slide the window open. Slip into the dark room as soon as your feet touch the floor, you glance at the bathroom door. All remains steel. Now I just need to make a make it to the door and I'm home free. You begin to tiptoe across the room, but you step on an old floorboard, sending a loud creak echoing through the room. Babe, is that you? Could you pass me my blue shirt? Definitely not pulling off this toga. He hasn't opened the door, but you know you have to act quickly before he does. In a panic, you pitch your voice higher. Oh, one second. You scoop up the blue shirt lying on the bed, crack open the bathroom door, and shove it through. Your beep! Quickly slip out of the room and into the hallway, closing the door gently behind you. Made it. Anissa, what the hell are you doing up here? 
I look up to find Inez staring at you wide-eyed, and you wince at the reality of your situation. Trying to learn teleportation? You're an idiot. With a shake of her head, Inez takes you under her wing and guides you down the hall. Wanna tell me why I just got an SOS from you asking me to make sure you were okay? Edwin caught the two of us in the bathroom, or would've if I didn't sneak out the window. You did what? Do I even need to tell you the all the ways that that was risky, including going into the bathroom with Drew in the first place? I know, and now I have to get downstairs to pretend like I've been in the backyard the whole time. Inessa sighs and squeezes her eyes shut, counting backwards slowly from ten to one. This is something I expect from Drew, but not you. We will be talking about this later, but for now, you've got two options. I could go down first, create a diversion while you run outside, or you play the jilted lover and run outside sobbing. Go with the diversion. You handle the crowds, and I'll sneak right out like nothing ever happened. Right, stay hidden until you have an opening. As Enos runs downstairs, you crouch behind the railing, watching. Yo, Dennis, we never had that push-up contest you promised me. Oh, you're on. You wait a few moments as you see a crowd gather around, cheering the two of them on. 21, 22, getting tired over there? In your dreams. Now's my chance. As quickly as you can, you rush down the stairs and out the door, keeping your head low. Out in the backyard, you quickly straighten yourself up. I made it. You flash a bright grin through the window at Inez, but she doesn't return your smile. You wait a while and head then head back inside. Hey guys, what's going on in here? Most of the party goers wave and greet you, but one of the frat brothers looks at you skeptically. You seriously expected me to believe you were outside? Literally, I just came in from the outside. I just heard Edwin say you were upstairs screwing Drew the RA in the bathroom. Party goers dissolve into whispers, but you can cross your arms and let out a disbelieving scoff. Screwing an RA? Since when do we uh, listen to anything Edwin says? Especially when it comes to Drew. Edwin's obviously jealous and will say anything to make him look bad. Edwin said he heard voices up there. The chatter picks up around the room and you quickly look to Inez to corroborate your story, she sighs. Did Edwin mention how he even knew they were going to be there? Seems like a little creepy to know someone's exact location at all times to me. He did follow me to the dive a few weeks ago. Something about he wanted to save me? You know, last time I called the duty number, he went on about being the campus saver or something. Luckily we caught it now. Can you imagine if that rumor got out? Yeah, lucky. Doing something like that could land you both in a lot of trouble with the conduct board. Inez looks at you intently, her point clear as crystal. Still, you clear your throat. Right, now if you'll excuse me, I'd like to have a few words with Edwin to, you know, clear my good name. Oh, this I gotta see. You hurry upstairs to the bathroom. Inez and the nosy party goers in tow. I know she's in here somewhere. You push your way forward through the crowd, a triumphant smile spreading across your lips. Oh, need help looking? Edwin whirls around and sees you not hiding in the bathroom, and his mouth falls open. Behind him, Drew wears a victorious exp expiration. I'm not usually one to say I told you so, but, um... I... you... but... Edwin, why are you so obsessed with me? You're taking this way too far. First you stalked me to the bar, now this. I... I wasn't stalking! And both times while you were on shift, do you want to lose your job? I don't see why I shouldn't report you. Edwin stammers as the crowd around you titters. I knew Edwin was a killjoy, but a stalker too. From his spot leaning against the door, Drew gives you a wave and a subtle wink. Hey, baby bird. Apparently we've been locked in here in the throes of passion for a while. Crazy, huh? If only you were ever so lucky. But... But... You were in the bathroom! I heard you! Give it a rest, Edwin. Don't you have a shift to get back to? But... But... He's corrupting Anissa! 
Why do I feel like that's something our best friend put him up to say? Get back to work. And then when Huffs and Puffs is way down the stairs, the crowd around you cheers, and you look at Drew breathlessly. I can't believe we got away with that. Mm, I know, right? You should have seen the look on Edwin's face when... Ahem, <clears throat> if you two are done gloating, I'd like to talk to you in private. You follow her down the hall and into an empty bedroom. I mean, I thought at any moment we were toast. I've never felt so alive. Your heart racing a million miles a second. You press a spontaneous kiss to his lips. He grips your hips, pulling them in to meet his own. Welcome to the wild side, baby bird. Mm -mm, you're both idiots, Jesus Christ. Ines closes the door behind her, and when she finally turns to you, her expression is cold as eyes. Honestly, I can't believe you got away with it either. You two are nowhere near as subtle as you think. A public hookup at one of the biggest parties of the year? I'd ask what you were thinking, except it's clear you weren't. Ines, we're sorry. We know you put you in an awkward spot, having to cover for us like that. It won't happen again. Oh, you say that now, but the way you two are going at it, it absolutely will. Look, I'm glad you two are enjoying yourselves, but the risk you're willing to take for your... are way too high. Word of the wise. Get to know each other outside the bedroom so you don't feel the need to spend every waking second there. I'm just letting this moment hang, because she's right. And for the love of all that's holy, don't leave here together tonight. I won't be able to save you twice. Inez turns and walks out the room, leaving you and Drew to stew in your narrow victory. Later, you're walking back to your suite alone after the party when you see a familiar silhouette approaching. And did you see that hat trick? Spirit, hi. Oh, hey, Anissa. You start to respond when out of the shadows appears a girl Samira had apparently been walking with. Oh, Anissa, I'm Nevaeh, the Samira's roommate. I feel like I already know you because Sammy won't stop gushing about her bestie. Oh, I wasn't sure if I was anymore. We haven't talked in a while. You're always going to be my best friend, Anissa. We're just taking a little break from each other. There's a lot growing that can be done in a time apart. It's actually pretty healthy every now and again. Well, hope the break is over soon, Sammy, because I don't like fighting with you. I guess that depends on whether we actually did grow in our time apart. How is Drew? Ouch. So, that's what all this is about? The thing with Drew still? Well, he's not helping matters, that's for sure. How could you possibly know him well enough to have such a negative opinion? The same way you think you know him well enough to have such a positive one. I know plenty about Drew. Including... His dreams and fears. You're not the only one who's getting to know your roommate. And just because I didn't immediately ditch him like you did me doesn't mean I didn't hear your concerns. I never ditched you, you ditched me, and... Samir stops, letting a silence fall between the two of you, but... Nevia nudges her. And what? Tell her the rest, otherwise she'll never know. You ditched me and it really hurt. Look, we need to go. We got a big game tomorrow and Coach has us on a tight leash. If we're not back by lights out, we're benched. Wait, you're actually playing as a first semester transfer? Even to the worst of times, Samir is still your girl. Despite your tiff, you feel your heart ache with the need to hug her. Not just playing, starting. Samir, I, I know we're not good right now, but I'm so proud of you. Lips, slips, and, or smile slips, and you feel a pang in your chest. Thanks. We should get moving so I don't lose that chance. I hope you're doing well, Anissa. You step to the side to let her pass, but while Nevia moves to follow her, she pauses. Hey, I know we don't really know each other, and I don't exactly know what's going on with the two of you, but I do know Samira talks really highly of you and how much your friendship means to her. Really? It definitely doesn't feel like that right now. 
look, this game will actually be her first one starting, and despite everything, I know it mean the world to her if you came. Think it over, okay? Have your jogs or catch up with Samir and the entire walk back to your suite. You can't help but turn the conversation over in your head. Does Samira really miss me? And can this easily be really be fixed so easily? For a minute there I was like, wow, that chapter was short. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Remember there was times when the chapters would be like 10 minutes or less. Yeah, I remember those. It was really crappy times. The next morning you wake up to your alarm, a brilliant light peeking out from under your blinds, and the smell of... Is that pancakes? I drag yourself out of bed and wander into the kitchen to find Drew pouring batter into a pan. Drew, what are you doing? Yesterday was a little uh, rough, but uh, I'm uh, about to make this the best morning ever with my world-famous pancakes. He flips the pancake in the air and catches it on the sizzling pan with a triumphant grin before freezing at your less-than-enthusiastic face. Or maybe not. We can always border in. Pancakes are kind of all I can make. It's not the food. I ran into Samira last night, and it felt different. Bad different. It's no wonder things are weird between us. We used to talk about everything, and now it's like I don't even know her. And I can't just tell her what's going on with me, because how I can share her if I have to avoid talking about you, someone I clearly... Clearly what? You get the point. He flips the cooked pancake onto the stack and turns off the stove before moving to stand behind you, rubbing your arms. You know Samira better than anyone in the world. If you really think about it, I'm sure you can find some way to patch things up. She did mention she's starting her first game day today. Her roommate invited me. Who pulls you to your feet and spins you around, your back pressed up against the counter as he rests his hands on your waist. Then go to the game later. Hash things out. Get your bestie bag. But that doesn't fix the you problem. Yeah, I wish I could come with uh, you, but being seen together publicly right now is riskier than I'd like. Which is uh, another reason I made breakfast. I was thinking we could stay in bed. Eat whipped cream off of each other. Really, dude. Warmth blooms deep in your stomach at the thought, but even as you're draping your arms around your shoulders, you try to tamp it down. I'd love to, but we have film class in 20 minutes. Plus, we're supposed to be cooling things off. The fact that both of our uh, best friends have pointed out how little we know each other should mean something. I mean, there are a lot of different ways to get to know someone. Drew bows his head and presses his lips just below your jaw. Dry, slip close, breathing comes heavier as your pulse races. Hmm, that feels like we should not be doing this. You nudge him away and he laughs, flashing you a playful grin. If you say so, but for a second there it sounded like you wanted to say something else. No, we owe it to Inez to get to know each other as friends without the benefits, but I can see why that would scare you. I mean, to know me is to love me. Well, I know you better than you think, baby bird. Yeah, you've been saying that since minute one. You hesitate, wondering if he meant it the way it sounds, but as you try to meet his eyes, Drew quickly sidesteps you, clearing his throat. Which is how I know you'd be all over me before the syrup rolls down these pancakes, so maybe we should just get to class. Oh, no, you don't. I reach out and snag his hand, pulling him back closer than you'd intended. As he towers over you, you square your shoulders. We are going to have a very friendly breakfast. You can picnic right here in the commons. And you think you can handle that? The tone of his voice is suddenly husky, and you can practically feel his gaze roaming your body. When you look up, his eyes are dark with want. Can you? Without waiting for an answer, you slip into your room for a blanket, and when you return, the two of you settle in side by side. Drew fills his plate, and as he raises a fork to his lips, his thigh grazes yours, drawing your eyes to meet where they meet with a smirk. Bon appetit, friend. There's no way that that was an accident. And if he's not going to play fair, then neither am I. Ah, yes. Stoop to his level. Drew, allow me. 
You climb onto your knees, bringing your breast's eye level, taking the four from him. Immediately his eyes flicker to your chest. <sighs> when you said friendly breakfast, I didn't realize you were planning on being the meal. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just a friend helping out another friend. Open. Your words become breathy as you bring the utensil to his waiting mouth. His eyes lock on you with a groan that has nothing to do with the phone. Food. <laughs> mm. The sound is enough to make you melt as he licks at a drop of syrup clinging to his lips. You feel your breath catch. In that case, maybe I should offer you a toast, you know, as a friend. You draw near, your eyes sinking to his lips, but just as you reach out to bring him closer, your hand knocks into his plate, sending syrup drenched pancakes toppling into his lap, and the two of you jump apart as the splatter fly. Jeez, baby bird. To be fair, I warned you about keeping this breakfast PG. A sticky lap is the consequence of your actions. Fast as lightning, he snatches up the can of whipped cream and sprays it all over you. Hmm, if we're handing out punishment, that's yours for starting this whole thing. I didn't start anything you did. You have the syrup fully intending to squirt him with it. When Drew grabs it out of your hands and holds it above his head. Oh, no you don't. That's what you think. You straddle his lap, arms outstretched for the bottle, but he catches you around your waist, holding you against him. Syrup runs down on both of you, and you let out a squeal. Did you just pour maple syrup on me? Maybe. What are you going to do about it? I think I'll get a taste. You press your lips to his pulse point and slowly run your tongue along his neck. A sticky liquid tasting particularly sweet on his skin. The bottle clatters to the floor and seconds later you feel him growing against you. The emergency apparent. You keep that up and this is going to go from PG to R real quick. Are you complaining? Not in this lifetime. But your whole getting to know each other thing is a kind of a runaway train at this point, don't you think? You can't help but agree. And reluctantly, you pull away with a groan. For a moment, you both lay back, staring up at the ceiling with nothing but the sound of a heavy breathing to keep you company. And then... This is insane. Can we really not make it through a simple breakfast without trying to get each other naked? Maybe we'd do better if we started out naked. I don't know about you, but I could definitely use a nice hot bath right now. Considering how far we just took this, do you really think we'd be able to handle the temptation? He rolls to face you. Propping himself up on an elbow, immediately his eyes find your lips and your heart picks up with anticipation. Maybe, maybe not, but we've got to at least try, right? I want to click no, but at the same time, you know, I know you all want to see what diamond choice it is, so... <sighs> deal. Come on. In the bathroom, Drew turns on the water, and you perch on the side of the tub, swirling your hand through the spray before adding a splash of bubble bath. While uh, that's going, I figure we should uh, go over some ground rules, because that's worked so far. The words are barely out of your mouth before you look up and find Drew already removing a syrup-covered shirt quickly you turn away. Ooh, don't you want me to turn around or something first? Really? Uh, how considerate of you, baby bird, but it's not like we haven't seen each other naked before. The whole point is this is to pr prove we can be platonic. And while you can't even look at me while I'm undressed and think that that ship has already sailed, don't you? Slowly, you turn back, your eyes may be locking on a Drew's sticky chest and abs. He tucks a finger under your chin, tipping your head back to meet his eyes. We don't have to do this, especially if it's going to be too hard for you. Hard for me, please. You should be worried about yourself. I've seen the way you look at me. If I were to stare right now, we'd never make it to the tub. Try me. It raises a smug eye around before you know it. You're rising to the challenge, moving to stand directly in front of him. His eyes lock onto yours as you reach for the hem of your top and slowly ease it over your head. As the fabric hits the floor, you smile. 
Your turn. Watches his fingers skim the smooth skin of his stomach, and unbutton his jeans, taking his time, lowering the zipper. His pants fall, revealing the clear imprint of his desire, straining against him's underwear. Drew clears his throat. <clears throat> My eyes are up here. Mm, I'm getting there. Yeah. Talk about keeping it professional. As your eyes rake over his frame, you feel yourself getting hotter until shedding your bottom is almost a relief. Next, you unclass your bra, letting it hit the floor, and for the first time, Drew's eyes slip, lips parting with an obvious intention. One last thing together. Together. Eases his waistband down, freeing himself as his underwear skims down his legs. In return, you push down your panties to the floor, evidence of your arousal coating your thighs. His eyes devour your body, stroking the warmth of building between your legs, until finally you each sink into the bubble of water as a different end of the tub. How are you uh, supposed to help me get clean all the way over there? Or was I'll uh, wash your back some kind of metaphor? We're supposed to be getting to know each other. If we get any closer than this, we're going to learn all the wrong things. Uh, risk I'm willing to do. Ugh. He raises a soapy hand and crooks a finger in your direction, his smirk sending a thrill fluttering through your chest. Crawl into his lap. Yeah, I'm sure this will end well. Without a second thought, you fold forward on your knees, sloshing water over the side of the tub as you crawl across its porcelain floor. His legs slip open to you, and you make your way between them, stopping only when your lips are a breath away from his. Be careful what you ask for. Don't worry, I can handle it. Eyes locked on yours, he sits to work, sudding up a loofah before swiping the netting over your neck, your arms, and between your breasts. The syrup melts away, leaving behind smooth skin. And you turn in his grasp, settling with your back to his chest, and for him to reach the rest. So we're naked, bathing each other. What's the next step in this big getting to know you plan? This is it, actually. That stripping down would inspire emotional nakedness. A shiver erupts through your shoulders as he skims the loofah down your spine, and he pauses a moment to let you recover. But to be honest, I'm feeling... All I'm feeling is uh, regular nakedness. Well, this was your idea, so I'm not letting you out of this bathtub until we learn something about each other. Like what, my deepest, darkest fear? If that's what it takes, getting close to someone is about being vulnerable, building that emotional intimacy. Something that a lot of people don't un really understand the meaning of anymore. Behind you, Drew motion still, and you glance over your shoulder to find his expression far away. I don't really do vulnerable, baby bird. It doesn't have to be anything extreme, just give me something. He busies himself with the rinsing the soap from your back until you catch his hand, lacing your fingers in his. What about your music? I'd love to hear that you're working on some... You really wouldn't. It's all angsty covers, lyrics that take themselves way too seriously. Uh, the only good one that's ever remotely been good is, isn't even my usual style. It's all sappy and upbeat. Sounds like my kind of song. It should be. I wrote it for... He stops mid-sentence, and when you look at him, a pink flush creeps up his neck. Drew Young, did you write me a song? I, uh... <clears throat> isn't it your time to be vulnerable yet? How is it so easy for you to be free sexually, but so hard for you to talk about your feelings? I don't know, maybe the same way it's easy for you to hide behind your academics when all you really want is to lo lose? I, that's not true. Literally, you're both part of me. I'm serious. Like, 50-50. I'm serious. <laughs> this is like an internal daily war I have. Maybe not in the last few weeks, but when you first got to campus, absolutely. I told you. I know you better than you think, Anisa. Drew swipes the sudsy bath water in your direction. Your paw is feeling thoroughly cold out. Before I met you, I'll admit that I always felt like there was a part of myself that I pushed down, kept hidden. 
And now, under the water, Drew's leg brushes yours, and you draw in a slow, steady breath. And now I feel free. And I have you to thank for that. Glance over your shoulder to find Drew looking squarely at you. His howl, head bowed, lips a breath away. You watch as a slow smile blooms across his face as you both realize you're waiting for the other to make the first move. Trust me, bringing you out of your shell has been my pleasure. You press just the tiniest bit closer before pulling back, proud of, your, of the unsteady breath you draw from his lips. But being platonic-ish wasn't too bad either. Talking like this with you, it almost felt like we could actually be friends. Outside of, well, you know. Mata Nisa, even with all the complexities of our arrangement, you know I care about you, right? You know you shouldn't, but something about the way he turns to look at you sends a jolt straight to your core, dampening your willpower. Right. His eyes flicker to your lips, and in that moment that you decide to give in, give in to your feelings welling up in your chest or the way your naked bodies meld together to your raw desires, you draw near to him, your eyes sinking closed. When suddenly you hear the common room door swing open, a familiar voice rings out. Drew! Oh, Lord, sweet Jesus. Well, this'll be awkward. Without further ado, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you did enjoy the content. Love your beautiful faces. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. You already know how I feel, so catch you all later. Peace out.